I'm working on a museum management game inspired by the likes of Rollercoaster Tycoon, Theme Hospital and The Sims. One of the best features about these games is really quite mundane, but made them stand out to me when I first played them. That's the ability to rotate items in the world, and to rotate the camera around the world to get a better view of it. I want to add the ability to rotate items and the world to my game, to give the player more control over what they're creating and make the game feel less static. Unfortunately, this is one of those changes that is much easier said than done. However, I've been making some great progress with this and I cannot wait to show off at the end of this video. So stay tuned. How's it going everybody? I'm Lewis, also known as Scaffolds, and welcome to the 8th devlog for my museum management game. Recently I've been working on isometric rotation for both rotating items and viewing the world from a different angle. In this devlog I want to take you over the challenges I faced whilst making this and show off what I have so far. The first thing isometric games need to rotate items are graphics. Due to the perspective, each item needs to be drawn from four different angles. This is quite a big task because every item needs four times the amount of art, meaning the time spent creating a single item is quadrupled when compared with a static game. However, there are a few tricks that can be used to help reduce this. The first trick is for symmetrical items. They can be flipped in the X axis, which means each item only needs two sprites, one for facing up and the other for facing down. The second trick is for static items. They always look the same, no matter the direction, which means each item only needs one sprite. Another trick to reduce time spent on isometric art is to use 3D art and pre-render each direction. This means only one asset needs to be created per item. Unfortunately, this trick won't work with the style of the game. However, I will be using the first two tricks as much as possible. Right now, I actually haven't done this step. I created a few directional sprites for testing and only when I'm happy with the code will I finish off the rest. Once we've got the graphics for our items, we can work on adding rotated items to the world. This is fairly simple to add, as all it requires is rotating the footprint for each item in the grid. This is easily done with 2D matrix rotation. From there, the grid can take the item in as normal. Rotating the world is a little bit trickier, as not only do you have to consider rendering, but also player input. When a player clicks on the grid, the existing code knows what position has been clicked. However, when the world has been rotated, that's no longer valid. To fix this, all player input needs to be rotated to reflect the current viewing angle. Again, this is fairly simple with 2D matrix rotation, even though it broke a few assumptions the original code made. Luckily, that was all fairly easy to resolve. Rendering the world had some similar issues. All objects have a position when they're added to the grid. So when the grid rotates, these positions need to be recalculated with 2D matrix rotation to reflect the current viewing angle. With this in place, I had just a few loose ends to resolve to get the game looking right in my engine. First off, the origin of cells. In my original code, all cells have two edges, one on top and one on bottom. I had to work out if that was still valid when the grid was rotated. I could have kept cells as static with their top and bottom edges in place, or I could have rotated the cells so the edges also rotate. There are concerns with both, but ultimately I decided to rotate cells as keeping them static would mean edges on the far side of the grid would have negative coordinates, and that seemed like more hassle to me. There was a similar issue with the origin of sprites. In the original code, all sprites said their origin to the left side, and I was unsure if that would work when the grid was rotated. I could have kept the left side origin However, that would mean the item position will be inconsistent. Alternatively, I could rotate the origin to match the item's grid position. I opted to rotate the origin, which was more work than I expected, and I'm not sure it's fully worked, as I spotted the bug when I tweeted about this recently. Either way, it's getting close, and I'm confident I can finish that off soon. The final issue I resolved was the depth of sprites. If you watched my previous devlog, you may remember that I split sprites into a left and right side to set their depth values independently. 
This approach proved fantastic as all I needed to do to add rotation was to update the get depth function to include rotation. This all adds up to a game that can rotate, giving the player a better view and more control over what they can create. Like I mentioned, there are a few minor issues with this, but I'm fairly confident I can iron those out, and I'll soon be able to start work on something new for the game. Make sure you're subscribed to get notified when I release a new devlog for the game. I hope you've enjoyed watching this devlog for my museum management game. Leave the video a like to let me know you did, and comment to give me any feedback. By the time this one airs, I should be working on Pixelmania, a month-long pixel art challenge. That should help revitalize some of my art skills so I can finish off the art for this game. It should be good. Thanks for watching, goodbye.